Hi. So roughly in about seven or eight minutes, I'm going to teach you block cipher encryption. Uh, so hang on. Uh, <laughs> the the encryption takes, uh, there is actually two parts in the encryption. There is a left part, which is the creation of the key, and there is the right part, which is uh, which is going to be the block cipher encryption itself. We're going to look at each one of those individual and then combine them together to see how, how the encryption actually works. So let's start with the key itself. Um, uh, first, I, I picked IOFIT number one as my key. So we're going to take that key and we're going to convert it to binary. Uh, how do you do that? Very easy. You take the first letter, you convert it to ASCII value. Side note on the ASCII value, uh, for those that don't know, it's a cool trick, I guess, if you're showing off in the office or whatever. Uh, if you hold the Alt key and you type the, the, the ASCII value on a numeric pad off to the right and then you release the Alt key, it produces that character on the output, no matter where, you know, what screen you're at, it's just a Windows and, and Linux function. Uh, anyways, moving on. Uh, so you take the ASCII value, you convert it to binary. Uh, once you you had that binary output, you put it in the output stream, and then you do the same thing for the next letter, next letter, next letter for the entire 64 bits. And that gives you the 64 bit key. Then what you do is uh, what's called a permutation. Permutation is a fancy way of saying that you're just going to rearrange the bits in there from an original stream to something different. Uh, and that's all it is. There is nothing encrypted here. You you take some number, some uh, some order, and you just rearrange it in a very specific way. It's nothing that that you do it you know however you want to. It's defined in the death standard itself. Uh, so as you see here, the permutated order is the first bit is fifty seven. So you take the fifty seventh bit, you copy it in the first place, and then so on and so on until you get the permutated stream. What you're going to do after that is you're going to take that permutated stream and you're going to chop it in half. <laughs> because I guess chopping things in half is fun. And uh, and then what you're going to do is you can do a left shift. Left shift looks just like this. Nothing fancy about it. Um, and then you're going to create, and that's how you get your first sub key. Again, there is a permutated order that you're going to combine the left and right together. And you're going you're gonna to rearrange them in a special way that is actually not going to use the entire uh, bit stream. It's going to use a, a, a sub of that bit stream, which is going to get you 48 bits in the first sub key. Um, and that's your first sub key. Then you're going to do the same thing over again. You shift it again one more time and you get your sub key number two. And you're going to do it 14 more times to get the all, the entire 16 sub keys. Uh, and that's it. So uh, if you stuck around with it this long, uh, you might as well be in it for a long haul because because we're halfway through. <clears throat> so uh, that's, that's all your 16 uh, keys. And uh, sometimes you'll move uh, one left shift, sometimes you'll move two left shifts according to this table right here. Now let's look at the DES encryption itself. Uh, and there's going to be a lot going on. We're going to break it out by parts. We're going to start with the with the original message and we're going to chop it up in a 64-bit blocks. And that's why they call it the block cipher is because you do it blocks at a time. Uh, so the first 64-bit block, what you're going to do with it is uh, you're going to permutate it. <laughs> Again, uh, DES likes permutation a lot, uh, which is rearrange it in this specific way. And then we're going to chop it again in half, I guess. Like I said, chopping things is fun. Uh, and then we're going to have this left side and the right side. We're going to do different things to the left side, and we're going to do different things to the right side. Most of this work, as you see on this main diagram, um, is done on the right side. And that's kind of the, the, the meat and potatoes of the encryption. That's going to be the hardest thing uh, that we kind of need to follow there. But that's, that's all it is. So uh, let's look at what happens on the right side. We're going to take that right side. And we're going to expand it. So that's the expansion function. It's, it's a form of permutation. But as you can see, we keep, kept, almost kept the original order. But we padded it with a, with a bit in the front, bit in the back, bit in the front, bit in the back. I highlighted those uh, for that purpose so that you can see exactly um, what the pattern there is. And, and I'll tell you in a second why that is. But then we're going to take that, that stream. And as you can see, we went from a 32-bit stream to 48-bit stream because we padded it like that. So we, we expanded it a little bit. Uh, so we're going to do it, uh, an XOR function with a sub key 1 uh, because now the sub key 1 is 48 bits and this expanded thing is 48 bits. And now we can do that XOR function with it. Uh, once we've done that, we're going to take the first six bits with that padded uh, bits on the front and the end. So now you can kind of see why why those are padded like that. And those padded bits have a very specific specific function apart from the center bits and that function is as such you have the row and a column that you combine from those 
And then what you do is you sort of play battleship with that information. You have this specific table that you take the row in a column and you find the value in the row in a column of that table. That value is five, so you copy it over and, uh, and that's your output of this, uh, of this table function. And uh, as you can see, going into this table function, we had six bits, coming out of it, we had four bits. So we're actually shrinking it back down. So the, the idea here is gonna shrink, get shrunk back down to 32 bits. So we're gonna do the same thing over, you know, seven more times. And that's gonna be, the only thing that's different is there's actually gonna be different table for each one of those seven other iterations, uh, apart from what I'm showing on the screen here. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do another permutation. <laughs> again, I don't know why, it just seems like fun. So permutation, again, it's not encryption in itself. The reason why it's all over the place is because it actually uh, sort of dilute, dilutes the, the, the actual character, any specific character across the old eight uh, byte block. 64 bits so if you had a letter a all over your message somewhere you, you don't see it as a pattern as, as clearly uh, because you diluted that letter a over the entire uh, block that you're encrypting so th that is the reason why permutations are there so crypt analysis get down on that and and that's uh, uh they say hey before you arrange it in that way that's the best way to to kind of shuffle things around <clears throat> So we we're almost there. Uh, the the right side is uh, is now one through this table function, and there is this table output that we have that we're going to do a couple of things with. We're going to take that table data, and we're going to XOR it with the left side, and then we're going to put it in the new right side. And we're going to take the right side from the previous round, and we're going to put it in the left side. That's it. And then uh, we're going to do that 15 more times. Uh, why? <laughs> well, there, there, there were 16 subkeys to begin with, so we did it with the first subkey, so we're going to do it with the other 15 subkeys. So total of 16 rounds, it's going to go through the entire thing uh, exactly the same way. And then at the end of it, uh, just for good measures, we're going to reverse uh, left and right uh, backwards. So we're going to put right first and left, uh, <laughs> just for good measure, I guess. And then we're going to do another permutation, and that's it. We're done. That's the entire uh, encryption process. Um, and we get ciphertext. So now <laughs> that you have this information, uh, one thing I should say that it's not going to add any marketable skills to your resume whatsoever. I'm sorry. <laughs> I guess just because we don't do uh, encryption by hand anymore. But uh, hopefully, if you're like me, uh, you, you didn't, you know, you wanted to know, you're curious how how things like encryption work. So again, if you if you want to get into like cryptanalysis or something like that, or you want to see if that's that's the track that you want to go by or go into uh, in the technology track, uh, you want to see a simple version of something first, and then you kind of build up build that knowledge up of, uh, from that point on. It's not that. Um, and, you know, it's not that, that you're going to pull out a napkin and start doing encryption, just uh, send messages to your, uh, you know, brothers and sisters or relatives or whatever, although it'd be cool. <laughs> anyway, um, so, but on top of that, uh, what I want to validate is uh, to make sure or to prove to you that what I just said wasn't a whole bunch of nonsense. Um, I actually created the entire thing in uh, in Excel. So this, this entire workflow that we just went through, um, I have it in Excel, uh, so let's let's take a look at that. As a matter of fact, <clears throat> we have a subkey, or um, yeah, the, the, not the subkey, but the key itself, and the key itself is IOFIT number two, and we have the message that we're going to encrypt, which is IOFIT number one. So as a matter of fact, like, let me let me show you if I, if I change something in here to another number, you saw the. the Key underneath the change, which in fact changes everything else in this process. And so when I did IOFIT number one as my key, it copied it over here, then it goes through the round of shifts, it goes through the permutations, and so on, uh, all the way until the end in the same fashion and way that we just talked about. Then the desk process itself goes exactly the same way that I just talked about. Again, there's desk encryption, the sub keys that is gonna be created, the permutation uh, that's done, the tables, the table outputs, the 16 rounds, and it's going to go all the way to the end until we get to our encrypted ciphertext. Um, so let's let's validate that again. IOFIT number one, IOFIT number one, and I am going to just use a regular online encryption tool. So input text is 
I will fit number one. Oops. And we're going to hit encrypt button. And then we see C7, 33, 41, 0A, D7, and so on. So let's validate it. C7, 33, 41, 0A, D7, H7, and so on. So, uh, and uh, we, I mean, we can we can go ahead and change it just to, so input text, we'll change it to IOFIT number two, encrypt. Come back over here, input text, or user input, so the message is IOFIT number two. That's going to change the entire process there. And hopefully, my encrypted message will now be F536 and so on. F536 and so on. So that's pretty cool. I hope uh, I hope you enjoyed it. So uh, if you did enjoy it, you can hit the like button. A lot more people are going to see it. If you hated it and you think it sucked, and then um, and you, you want somebody else to suffer uh, the same way, you can hit like again and more people will see it. Anyways, take it easy.